Um, welcome, everybody. Let's begin straight away. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I suggest that you just uh, shake your hands a little bit. <laughs> and then I suggest that you s waggle your lips a bit, like that. Mm. Yeah, so just to check out where your lips are. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure they're still in place. We're going to take about an hour. And uh, you're very welcome. So this is a look at sound foundations. Now, uh, a few words about this approach, and then we are going to work through uh, a lesson. Now, the approach, the idea is to take pronunciation out of the head and into the body. That's the first thing. To make pronunciation a physical activity, not just a mental activity. So that's number one. And... I have a kind of thought that one of the problems with teaching pronunciation is that we keep it as a mental activity. Indeed, at universities, phonology courses are often taught as mental activities. So, take pronunciation out of the head into the body. This means that we are using the muscles. We're making it a physical activity and focusing on the muscles. So, one of my aims, and you'll see this right at the beginning of the lesson, is to make a connection between the head and the muscles, to find where the muscles are. Next thing is, when we attend to muscles, muscles work by moving, and when things move, they're visible. So, in a way, we're also making sounds visible. So this is also a visible approach to pronunciation. We're using our eyes to see pronunciation. And as you know, in every language in the world, people who are deaf can see what their friends are saying. And yet, in language learning, we don't use that fantastic capacity to see sounds. So we're also going to use that, and I'm going to demonstrate that. So we make uh, pronunciation physical. We make it visible. All right, so those are two uh, very important things. The next thing is that I'm going to use mime with my mouth and gesture with my hands to help to make the sounds visible so that you'll be using your eyes. And sometimes the sound will come from you and not from me. I may be silent. I may be giving the model of the sound silently. So, and I'm going to demonstrate that as well. There's also another way of giving models where the teacher says it only once, and I'll try to demonstrate that when the situation arises. A third way of giving models, which you are very familiar with, is the teacher repeating several times and the students repeating several times. That's also possible, but that is not the approach that I'm taking. This is not an approach of habit-making or repetition. This is an approach of awareness and intentional making of sounds. I just want to uh, kind of point that out first, but I'm going to demonstrate all of this in a moment. The model that we use, which English is it going to be? Well, it's the English of the teacher, in this case, this one. But if the teacher is from any other country in the world, it is that teacher's pronunciation. Like every teacher, we can also use a CD or a cassette. We may have other teachers that come into the classroom. So the students will be exposed to different sounds, uh, different sound systems. However, the uh, model that's used is that of the teacher. So when the teacher uses these, this chart, uh, the teacher puts his or her own sound onto the symbol. When a Scottish person uses the dictionary, they see these symbols, but they make their Scottish sounds, and the same everywhere else. And when we use this chart, I'm not teaching you the symbols, only using these spaces as reminders of the sounds. And actually, you will learn the symbols very quickly anyway. So this is not an approach which teaches the symbols, but students will quickly learn them, and then they can use it from the dictionary and so on. OK. Uh, the final thing to say is that uh, this approach divides phonology into sounds, here, which we're going to work on now. Words, when we join the sounds together, add some rhythm, and we have word, word stress and words. And then connected speech, when we join the words together, we have sentence, stress, and we have intonation. 
What we're going to do today is particularly work on the sounds and a little bit on words and connected speech. And the lesson I'm going to do with you is the same lesson that I would do with any first class, whether they are beginners or intermediate or advanced or native speaker or anybody at all. And that is to put this chart into circulation so that we can use the chart in all further lessons for as many years as the students are studying. Okay. And we can stop from time to time and talk as teacher to teachers. And otherwise, I'll be treating you as teacher to students. And mistakes are welcome. In fact, this method needs mistakes because mistakes are the syllabus. Mistakes are what tells the teacher what to do. Okay. So find your mouth. And here's mine. Look at this. And could you please say this sound? Say it nice and loud. Yeah, nice and loud. Loud, loud, loud. And high and squeaky and low and rumbly, like the wind. Okay, that's it. Okay, that's this sound here. Now this one. Said. High and squeaky and low, like the wind. Okay, it's here. And this. This sound here, what is it? Okay, this is for you. Please take this sound. Hold it. That's it. There it is. Okay, you can stop saying it, but what is this one? Okay, so don't drop it. All right, hold on to it. This. And this sound here, this is for you, Isabel. Okay, this one. Okay, now we're going to go on a little journey from here to here. Can you say this sound? Okay, now, put your finger against the front of your lips and say this sound. What do you notice against your finger? The lips? What are the lips doing? Vibrating and what else? Stretching. Which way are they going? Forward. Okay, so are the lips forward here or back? Back. Back and there? Okay. So now, just without your finger, put your, your attention in your lips and feel the forward and backward movement. Say the sound. <laughs> lips going forward, lips going back, lips forward, lips back. Okay. Now, put your finger here and thumb here and say the sound. <laughs> okay. What's happening here? Lips narrowing, yes, or we can also say rounding. Okay, so the lips are rounded here, and here the lips are spread, spread okay, wide or smile or spread. Okay, so that's the second th movement of the lips. Third thing, take a finger, a clean finger, <laughs> or a pen, a pen will do. Now, make this sound, said. Okay, now, make the position, but don't say the sound. That's it. Now, what you have to do with your finger or your pen, find the tip of your tongue. So take your finger to your tongue. You'll have to open your teeth a bit. Take your finger to your tongue. All right. Now, when we go over there, don't lose touch with your tongue. Keep the finger in contact. Here we go. Okay, find your tongue. What happens? I see some of you losing touch with your tongue. <laughs> Those of you that kept contact with the tongue, what happens? Tongue goes back. What, here or there? As we go over here, the tongue goes back. How far? Half a finger. All right, some way. So now, put your attention in your tongue and just feel the tongue going back without the help of your finger or pen. So this sound? Tongue forward, tongue back. Tongue forward, tongue back. Okay, all right. So when we are in this sound here, is the tongue forward or back? Forward. Yes. <laughs> and when we're here, are the lips forward or back? 
back. Okay. So in this sound here, tongues forward and lips are back. Yeah. And over there? Okay, so say this sound and we'll go over there. Start. <laughs> yes, okay. So we just make contact with our attention with the muscles, in this case, of the lips and of the tongue moving forward and back. A bit later on, we'll make contact with the jaw. And very soon, we make contact with all the muscles that we need to contact in order to make all the sounds that we need to make. Now then, this sound again? And that one? Okay, so we're going to go on this little journey again. Slowly changing. Stop. Make this sound. Look. And this one? This one? <laughs> Great. Okay. So now we've got four sounds. This one? Now, at the beginning, I was uh, miming, and here's the mime for this sound. And here's a gesture to help make it nice and long, you see, and also gives the indication of the lips. Okay, just try it. That's it. Okay. Now, here, the mime, a bit less clear because the lips are more relaxed now, remember? So it's more like this. And I'm using my hands just to give a little gesture, very short. Something like that, just to. Okay, just try it. Okay, this one. Yeah, this one. That's it. So now, again. Okay, so lips are forward, but not so much as there. And it's a kind of just a little energy. Short, very short. Get it, short. That's it, okay. And this one. Now, we can make it. Fr pull, pull the sound from your mouth. And pull it from other people. See, and you can make it as long as you want, like this. Go on and on and on. Pull more and more. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Okay. So we're doing a number of things. First, the teacher is making, using mime, which is sometimes very visible, sometimes a bit less. He's using gesture to help, especially with the amount of energy and the length. He's making the sounds like plastic that can be pulled and pushed and taken and given and pulled back and given to somebody else. So it's like a, a thing which we're able to pass around. So here we are with these different uh, positions. And we start here, we go there, and we discover those two in between. Please, could you bring yours and put it back on the chart? The one that you have in your hand, I hope. Yeah, put it back here, please. Is that the right place? Yeah, OK. Can you bring yours back and stick it? This is an ecological approach. No wastage of sounds. Everything is recycled. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> now, so far the teacher hasn't spoken, and although you are advanced speakers of English, the fact is that this also works with beginners because this sound and this sound seems to work and it's very visible more or less universally in more or less every language. The sound, it may not be exact, but it's enough to work from. Then we need these two in-between sounds. Now, what happens here is that the teacher, instead of giving them himself, can listen to different students and say, hey, listen to the difference, and then choose one of them and say to the students, do it like that. So let's just try that. Uh, make this sound first. Okay. Now I'd like you to listen to the very small differences between people. You said. And we can hear it's very clearly the same sound, but with very small differences between people. Let's try the second one, this. That's it. 
Okay, now let's listen to some, enjoy the differences. Can you hear small differences? And so the teacher says, enjoy the differences. And then the teacher, as we go around, may choose one of them. For example, would you say yours? Okay, and I might say to everybody, do it like her. So you said? And everyone. And for a moment, the model is there. A bit later, it may disappear and be somewhere else. Uh, this one? Okay, everyone say it again. Okay, let's listen to some differences. Can you hear the different qualities? And yet all those differences are inside the box. So we can say that this box contains many different but acceptable sounds. All right. Now, make this sound. You need to relax. In fact, you need to do nothing. And you need to relax your jaw. It helps if you look like an idiot, really. <laughs> and now, do nothing, but say this sound. That's it. More, more of it, yeah. That's it. And the thing is to do nothing. It's a very, very English sound. Okay, make it again. <laughs> Long. It's this one here. Again? Uh, Lovely. Now, make the same sound, but look intelligent. <laughs> but don't change the sound. Long? Okay. And again, the jaw is relaxed, the tongue is relaxed, and the voice box is working. So, All right. Now, let's listen to some differences. A bit longer. That's it, yeah. Longer. That's it. Can you hear the differences between them? Uh, 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 Wonderful. Just to hear all these sort of idiot sounds. <laughs> <laughs> now, those are fine. And now make it again, everybody. Uh, and once more. Uh, Stop. Uh, uh, small. Uh, Very small. Uh, uh, no, smaller. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> it's this one. Very small idiot. <laughs> and this one? Okay. Now, the teacher is not giving a model, and some students may say, teacher, please say it, which is fair enough. At this stage, the teacher is finding enough in the group to say, do it like that, do it like that. You don't need mine yet. But also, by not giving you a model, I'm obliging you to look inside for reference points. So I'm trying to, and I'm trying to give you the reference points, which is your muscular movements, the position of the sound, and how that affects your ear. So make this position, but don't speak. Now say it. Make this position, but don't speak. Position? Okay. Position, but don't speak? Yeah, that's right. So, by saying, take the position, we are helping people to make contact with the muscles that make the sounds. Instead of just kind of blindly copying the teacher or copying the cassette, but in some way to search inside, to find their own muscular criteria, to use muscular memory. Let's take a few more sounds now. I'm going to say a sound. Don't think. Just do it. Speak. Okay, that's it. Yeah, nice. And long, 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 long. Lips right forward. Lips forward. Tongue back. That's it. And the tongue is so far back. It's further back than you thought was possible. That's it. Okay, let me hear you. Yeah. Okay. Do you hear the differences between each of those? Can you say yours? Can you make it a bit like that? And yours? Okay. Now, something that the teacher can do is when he hears a sound that's not quite right, I can say to myself, hmm, I'm hearing oh, and I want oh. Let me think. Oh, oh. What's the difference? Oh, 
or, and I'm just talking to myself, or, or, and then the thing is to slide from one to the other, uh, or, oh, I see, uh, or my lips come forward, uh, and my tongue's going back, ah, uh, or, so I can say to everybody who's been watching me, and probably trying in their mouths, so lips really forward and tongue really back, oh. that's it. And then suddenly we begin to hear another resonance in the sound. Could you say it? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, you hear the difference between those two? And for the moment we can say they're both in the box and they're both different. Here's another sound. Okay. Okay. Uh, say it again. And yours? Okay. Now make it kind of open. And a bit soft. Uh, those of you that uh, uh, speak Spanish, make the Spanish sound. Okay, and the English sound, a bit more open and a bit less energy. That's it, again. Okay, this one? And this? Okay, here. That's it. And this one? Okay, like uh, this is the sound of a massage. Okay. And now imagine that you have an orange in your mouth, and it's pushing your tongue back and your jaw down, and you try to close your lips. Oh, speak. <laughs> okay. So now we have this. Uh, this is the position of the, here's, sorry, front sounds, back, top sounds, back sounds, bottom sounds. Here's the mouth. Here are the teeth. Here's the tongue. Front, back. Jaw open a bit more. Tongue front, tongue back. Jaw open a bit more. Tongue front, moving back. So it's a kind of map of the mouth, a diagram. Short. Now this one? Yeah. Okay, let's hear yours. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. And this one? Okay, a bit more closed. And this one more open. Now put your finger here and your thumb here and say this sound. What do you notice? Widening, okay. The, the jaw opening, the mouth opening. And if this is the uh, bottom jaw, the tongue is in the bottom jaw. So as the jaw drops, so the tongue drops. And again, we can move from this sound. Open a bit. Open a bit. Okay. And the tongue is front. And the lips are spread. Said. This one again? Yeah, English. That's it. Okay. So less energy and a bit more, wi a bit wider open. Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't do anything. If you do something, you change the sound. It's a very neutral sound. And now. Okay. So please. Come here, and you stand there, and you don't say anything. You just point at those and see what they say. Okay? <laughs> so you speak what she points at. Is it good? Are you satisfied with what they did? Okay, right, excellent, good. Uh, and you, please come and also point at any of these. Take, let's go around. Can I hear yours? Okay, more down here. That's the one. Okay, say it again. Psst. That's right, yes. Okay, all right. Now, are there any sounds here which you yourself are not sure about? Yeah. Can you point? Okay, yeah, all right. And now, the sounds that are on the chart, that are neighbours on the chart, are also neighbours in the mouth. 
when the person is not sure of a sound, maybe they're also not sure of the sounds near to it. So whenever we look at the chart and there's some uncertainty, we can work with the ones close to it. So let me have the pointer for a moment. And I, you speak. OK, make this a bit more open. That's it. Yeah? Good. More open. And everybody, say that. More open and... OK, now, the tongue is front, the jaw is open, and the lips are spread. So we can feel here a little kind of pull. OK, this one. And now... OK. This one. Yeah, and this one. OK, now, uh, you speak and I point. So in the first one, I point, she speaks. Second, she speaks and I point. You take any of these four and I'll point at what I think you say. Eh. Again? Eh. I think you're saying this. Mm -hmm. um, ooh. Mm. Eh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Eh. <laughs> OK, so now, uh, and this is something for everybody. Let's take this position now, the sound. That's it. Now, what we're going to do is to let the jaw drop and also the tongue at the front and the lips spread. You said? Yeah, OK. Yeah? OK. Let the tongue down. OK, you're beginning to make a difference, but the tongue is up. Now, you point mm -hmm. at any of these four sounds, and I will speak. Now, here's the first time the teacher's actually saying the sounds. Not for you to repeat, but just because the student asks for them. So let's see what happens now. Uh. Ah. Uh. This <laughs> 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 is what I'm most sure about. OK, so right. I can, yeah, yeah. Can, can we repeat? If you point. You point and I'll, you speak and I'll point. <laughs> Go on. Uh, okay. It's kind, now you're getting low enough. Yeah. It's kind of overflowing yeah. into this one. Yeah. So make this again. Uh. That's that. Deep, lower. Uh. Yeah, this here. Mm -hmm. And this one? Uh. And that's good. Uh. That's exactly it. So uh, as you can see then, what we do to go from here to here to here is partly just to open the jaw and let the tongue and the jaw down. Same here. E -A. Now we've got to open the jaw, let the tongue down and keep the lips uh. spread. That's it. Yeah, you got it. OK. Now, take a snapshot, an internal snapshot. Do that. Say it. All right, now, take a snapshot of that so you can return to it any time you choose. Everybody, say the sound. OK. So <clears throat> the point is not for the teacher to keep making the sound and the student to keep repeating it, because the student doesn't necessarily know what she or he is doing. So. How can I try to help you, the student, to arrive at the sound and to have a sensation, an internal sensation, and to use muscular memory to find and retrieve and remember that sound? So now Isabel has the experience of that sound, and in five minutes, maybe it disappears. But she knows she can go back there. And each time she comes back, it'll be quicker and quicker to come back. Now... <clears throat> So we can uh, spend a little time playing with this, uh, the teacher pointing, students coming up to point. But after a short time, every student in the class knows which bits here they are more or less sure about and which bits here they are not quite sure about and which bits they're confused about. And that's all the vowels. We present them all at once, not two this week and two next week and four the next semester and, and five the year after. We need all the sounds now. So we present all the sounds together. And you, the reason you need to present all the sounds together 
not just because you need them all now, but each sound defines all the other sounds. So you need them together so they can help to shape each other. And of course, this mouth, back, front, top, bottom, it's the same mouth as for all other languages, but just where do we divide the spaces? So we may find that in some languages, for example Spanish, there may be five or six spaces. And we may find that in English there are 11 or 12 spaces. So we've got to divide a bit more carefully. <clears throat> now, this sound. What is this? OK, so Yumi, could you take the sound? That's it. Could you come here? Bring it here. All right, that's it. What's this sound? OK, okay this one? <laughs> OK, this is for you. Could you bring it? Now, come here. So what's this sound here? And this one? And this one? This one? OK, make it more open, more softer. Open. That's it, that's the one. Yes. That's it, you got it. Take a snapshot of that one. This sound? So now? And backwards? Right, so now, this one? Let's have um, a little bit of this and a lot of that. And a lot of that and a little of that. And now let's have 60, 40. OK, so we can mix them together and have... OK, so it's gone. It's here. <laughs> the sound is... Say it. A. Yeah, and... A. <laughs> <laughs> so? A. All right, this one. A. It's gone. A. No, it's not there. It's mixed up. Okay, what's this sound here? A. Which is this plus this. So it makes... A. A. Yeah, that's that. <laughs> okay, say it. A. Okay, make it nice. Make it two sounds. A. Okay, please take that and put it on the chart. <laughs> Do you agree? Is that a good place to put it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we can make the diphthongs in this kind of way by getting students up and playing with it uh, in that manner. So let's just have a look at some others uh, more quickly. Now, uh, if you just... Actually, you don't have to do anything just yet. Uh, I'm going to say one of these or one of these. And you say one if it's one of these and two if it's one of these. OK? Here's the first. Two. two. One. One. Two. 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 One. one. Two. So you can see the difference between monothong and diphthong. OK? Now, I'm going to say one of these and you point at what you think it is, OK? So here's the first one. Do you agree? Yes. OK. Here's the second. Is she right? Here's another one. Another one? Okay, 
So she's seeing, and you are seeing, the difference between these diphthongs. Thanks very much. <laughs> OK, so we can prove quite easily that these two are visible. So we've got monothongs visible and diphthongs, which we can easily make out of two monothongs and put there. So actually, to, to learn the diphthongs is not very difficult. To become practiced at them takes longer, of course. But we can find them in the mouth. And we're using the eyes and the muscles with which to find them. OK, so this is how we would put the vowels, all of the vowels, into circulation. Now, in a class which is a beginner's class or intermediate class, I would do this on the first day that we meet. Because, first, I know that students are going to be quite successful. Quite successful. And I know that that will give them a lot of confidence. And I know that at the end of the first lesson, they can think to themselves, ah, so that's all the sounds in English. And I find that I know some of them. And after a few days, they will find that all the other sounds become clearer and clearer. Now, let's have a look at the consonants. What's this sound? And this one? This one? Yeah, and this? OK, so put your hand here. What's happening? What happens? Vibration. OK. So we can say the voice is coming off and on. So this is like a switch, off, on, like the light switch. OK, so this sound, voice, off, on, off, on. That's it. So now we discover this little switch here. Make this sound. Keep going. Voice on, off, on, strong, off. OK, so again, on. And uh, teeth, tongue. <laughs> now, if we bite too hard, we get... <laughs> and if we bite too softly, we get... But somewhere in between, we can have another sound. And even the tongue can go just behind the teeth, not so visible. Okay, no voice. That's it. And now, with the voice? Not this one, this one. That's it. And without the voice? Voice? Okay. So now, notice the tongue moving back in the mouth. Here, say it. Tongue moves back. Tongue moves back. You feel the tongue going from the front to the back? OK, where is, make this. Where's the tongue? Just behind the teeth here, OK. Make the sound. Where's the tongue? At the top, but just a bit further back, against the top. Uh, the, the ridge behind the teeth. And make this sound. Where's the tongue? A bit further back again. So we're sliding the tongue back against the top of the mouth. What's this sound? That's it. And with the voice? Okay. So now, all these sounds need some kind of obstruction, something which blocks the air. These sounds have no obstruction. The sound comes out just a different shape. But here there's something which stops it. And it's always two things. Two things meet in order to stop the sound in some way. What two things meet here? Teeth, Teeth, Teeth and lower lip. OK. And we let the sound through. Make it. And the same with the voice. OK. This one, what stops the sound? Teeth. Teeth, again, and this time the tip of the tongue, all right? And now we move back again. What stops the sound here? 
tongue and and the ridge just behind the teeth, the hard ridge behind the teeth. And here, what stops the air? What slows the air? Tongue again and and the palate. Okay. So now we can say this is like again front and back, just the same as we had front and back here. And the tongue is moving back in the mouth. So at the front. And with the voice. And now a bit further back. And with the voice. A bit further back. And with the voice. A bit further back. And with the voice. Yeah. Now, I'll show you something interesting. Make this sound. Slide the tongue back to here. Slide the tongue back to here. Slide the tongue back further. And you end here. Okay? And we discover this sound. Because here the tongue is against the teeth, here the tongue is against the ridge, here the tongue is against the palate. And we take the tongue further back, nothing, nothing, nothing for the tongue to be against. And we find this sound. It's kind of like a vowel, although it's not. So make this one. Okay. Make this sound. That's it. And with the voice. Okay, and this sound. And with the voice. Okay, and now this and this together. And with the voice. And this sound. And with the voice. So again, front to back, we make sounds which are kind of like plosive sounds, sudden sounds. And these sounds, friction sounds. How many sounds here? Eight. And how many positions? Four. Okay, because of this. And how many sounds here? Eight. And how many positions? Four. Okay. And now let's look at these ones here. Make it. Okay, so we stop the air and it's coming out of the nose. Make it again. Okay, when you do it, pinch your nose. Say, speak first. And now pinch should stop the sound. If it doesn't, then you have a leak. Right? <laughs> so, make it. Okay, and now this position. And this one. So those three sounds, all of which are through the nose. This one, we make the stop here. All of this, this is in the same position as this one. Okay, so make this position, but don't speak. And I make this. Same position, but you do something different. Make this position, but do this. Make this position, and say this. So it's like three sounds in the same position. And now this one. Okay. So the air is coming out from the nose. So make this position. Okay, hold it, don't speak, and say this. See, same position, but just a different movement. Again, make this position, but don't speak, and say this. Same position, different sound. Again, make this position, don't speak, and say this. See? Same position, same position. And this one again, and this. Again, the same position. So from here, we can make five sounds. From here, three sounds. And from this one, also this sound. Okay, and make this position and say this one. So, uh, in, in a way, we can help students by finding that here, uh, three sounds share this position. Here, five sounds share this position. Three sounds share this position. Really, there's not so many positions for all of these sounds. Now, again, make this position, but don't speak. Speak now. OK, hold it. Let the side of your tongue down, and you'll get this sound. Sides up. Sides down. OK, so we find that these two are also connected. And now make this position once more. And the tip of the tongue, bring it up. 
Yeah. And back and up. OK. So we can also find the relation between this one. So this is a quite a useful starting place for seven different sounds. Finally, So it's a diphthong. Yeah. It's this. Yeah. Now, make this and move the tongue strongly. Yeah. It becomes, yeah. in English, a consonant. Yes. Okay. But if we make it uh, as a diphthong, it's like this. Yeah. As a, a consonant, like this. Yeah. Okay. And this... And make the lip movement strong. And we have this one. So in this way, we can gradually discover all of the sounds. So, first word. What? What? Again, from the beginning. So there we begin to build words. Of course, that's not English because we're saying all the words separately. So we need to join them together. Make the first. So, so you can see. OK, make it together. So we can see. In English. So we can see. That we can OK, those four. OK, from the beginning. So we can see. OK, and then the rest. Okay, um, now then, could we please, could you suggest an English word of three or more syllables? Just call it out, any word of three or more syllables. Beautiful. Okay, so let's say now... We're going to use this chart to work with vocabulary. We have a word. Maybe it's come from the course book. Maybe it's come from the text. Maybe it's come from the CD. But here's the word said. Beautiful. Okay, so my question is, how many syllables? Okay. What do you do to count the syllables? You use your fingers, but also what do you do in here? You say it. Okay, you say it. And if I say to you, how many sounds in that word? Five? Seven? Eight? Okay. The exact number is not important. What's important is that when I say to you, how many sounds in that word, you rehearse it in your mind. Okay, let's check it out. What? What? This one? What's the first? Yeah. And then? Okay. Please come and spell that here. Now, 
when the student is pointing to the chart, the student is always silent, but the others always say whatever she points at. So you point and you say what she points at. Okay. Quickly. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay. Put those sounds together. Said. Okay, what's the exact pronunciation that she's given us? Okay, is there any other possibility? Mm -hmm. Okay, can you do another one? Okay, say it that way. Okay, good. Now, one of the things that we will want to do is to work with the word stress. So we begin to put the sounds together to make a word. But an important part of the identity of the word is where is the stress? On which syllable is the stress? And that, of course, is more or less predictable. We can find it in the dictionary. But I would like students to hear that stress by experimenting with all the possibilities. So what I would like, please, is if you three would come here. I need to bring your chair here. So you here and your chair. Let's just put this. And you are going to be three syllables. All right? So you can sit there and you can sit here. You're the, you're the syllable. That's it. OK, that's very good. <clears throat> so sit down, please. OK, say this word. Beautiful. OK, now you stand up. So this syllable is stressed. Say it like this. Beautiful. And you sit down and you stand up. Say it like this. Beautiful. And say it like this now. Beautiful. Okay, now then, uh, when the stress moves, of course, the vowels may change their quality a little bit. So you stand, say this. Beautiful. Okay, now what is the quality of this vowel when we do it? Very short. What is the sound? It could be this one, which is what we were shown, or it could be, could be this one, yeah. And this one? What will this be? It could be this, or it could be... Okay, so say it. Okay, now you sit down, and you stand up. Now say it. What happens to this vowel? It shortens, and maybe it becomes like this sound, a schwa sound, uh, beautiful, beautiful. And this one? And this one? Okay, so say this. Stand up. <laughs> okay, you can sit down and you stand up. Now what happens? Okay, make this short. And this short. And this could become quite long. Okay, so say it. Okay, so... Some, all right, you can sit down. So sometimes then it can be helpful for our students just to really discriminate between the different possible stresses, and to see how the pronunciation changes. Now, I'm going to say it one of these ways, and you stand according to what I say. I'm going to say, beautiful. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to say a different one now. Beautiful. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I can say, beautiful. Beautiful. How many, how many stresses there? Beautiful. Okay, so, okay, so you, you're up and you're up. Listen to this. Beautiful. Say it. Beautiful. Okay, now I'm going to say the usual English version, which is beautiful. You agree? Okay. So that's just a way, then, of playing with the, the uh, stress. And every now and again, we can work with a new word and work on its uh, stress, just so students are really hearing it, not repeating it, but finding the stress and discriminating with different, between different stress patterns for themselves, and seeing how the vowels may change according to the stress. 
There's another reason for working with word stress. It helps the memory of the word. So working well with the word stress is like an energy, an energy distribution, and the muscles can help the memory to recall the word. So helping our students to get the word stress well at the beginning may help them to remember it and to recognize it. And there's one other advantage. In really learning to put energy on one syllable and not on another, we begin to prepare for connected speech and intonations and the rhythm of connected speech. And if our students can really shift a stress according to their meaning, they are then beginning to operate the intonation system. All right, we're just going to do one short thing with some connected speech. Now, thank you, syllables. Please return to your places. <coughs> so, <coughs> here is a... Some of you may have heard my story about my visit to uh, Buckingham Palace. It was in the middle of winter, and I was having tea with the Queen. And there's fireplace, right? Uh, photographs, table with silver teapot and tea, scones, uh, the Queen and me, and the corgis, small dogs. <laughs> so anyway, and the Queen's very relaxed. She's wearing sports clothes, you know, uh, for house, housekeeping clothes, <laughs> and uh, a small sports crown. For, for cleaning and, uh, you know. And so anyway, there we are. And I, we are drinking tea. And I said... Oh. But with great... Okay, so just try them. But say it with, with sorrow. <laughs> and she said, First two words. See, say this with regret, with, with sorrow, with royal sorrow. Now then, if you are blue-blooded, see, then you might do it a little bit differently. And so she says this. Say it again. But if you're blue-blooded, you have a little bit of this sound first. So it's like this. <laughs> Just a little bit, not too much. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And do it quite quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, actually, this is very hard for red-blooded people to say. But <laughs> and I discovered they say this sound all the time in, in Buckingham Palace. Now, so... Uh, and in, in blue blood. Oh. And then, this is the neat thing, with the consonant first, and then... No. Yeah, so... Oh, no. Yeah, not too much, but also not too little. Yeah? So... Oh, no. Okay, that one. Please. Yeah, and then, with more consonants... 
So now, make this uh, royal utterance. So first line is from me. I remember in red-blooded uh, pronunciation. Oh, uh, well, no, just, just keep this one. O- only one word. Oh, yeah, a bit faster than that. They do speak fast in the back. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. And the reply? The red-blooded, the blue-blooded version. Okay. Oh, no. That's good, but quickly. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. So just uh, by w- in case ever you should be in Buckingham Palace and uh, having tea, uh, it's useful to practice this. Uh, so would you just turn to your partner and practice this important piece of communicative English? <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot.